Shalom, man. Shalom, man. It's me like the other sister. Old lady near. And those that are far off. I'd like to say shalom on this morning. Those of y'all that don't mind, we're going to deal with. Oh, trying to get my chair situated right. We got a couple of issues that we're going to deal with this we ain't got no specific direction that we're aimed in, but the Father means for us to deal with some things that are of the utmost importance, and we're going to deal with them today, all right? Our praises to the Most High and His most glorious Son. On this morning, this is the day that the Most High had made. We should rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, none of us had to be here this morning. So uh, while I tag a few people, I said that uh, I'm going to play y'all some intro music that we can begin to raise our young brothers up. And pick it up. So I'm going to tag a few people. Let's go. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Moshe on track with your boy Judah this is King Moshe and Yehuda. Yeah. Now you know we got the plug on that word, right? Hey, just come see us. We got you, man. Whatever precept we need. I got the blood. I got the blood. I got the blood. I got the blood. My hero, what's up? What's up? What's up? So much for love. So much for love. We got what you want. We got what you want. Line up on precepts. Yeah. It's all in the book. Hey. I got the blood. 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 My hero, what's up? My hero, what's up? Show me some love. Show me some love. We got what you want. We got what you want. Line up on precepts. It's all in the book. Yeah. I know the blood. You know the blood. The father is son. The father is son. Go get this word. Go get this word. As much as you want. As much as you want. I'm popping the trunk. I'm popping the trunk. I'm pouring out heat. I'm pouring out heat. Yes, sir. 
This is the day the Most High have made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Man, I wish I knew the name of that song, but I don't. So I'm going to have to go. I know where I'm going to go. I'm going to go to I'm gonna go to YouTube, and I'm gonna upload one more while I'm tagging a few folks. All right, let's go here. I'd like to say shalom to all my Israelite brothers and sisters, those that be near and those that are far off. Yep. And let's go here. There we go. Let's go here. Let's go here. I'm gonna just load up this earth when it fire, you know. Play with it. Got some things to get off my chest, man. Let's go. Let's words of this music. Galatians 5 and 22 through 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. 23. Meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. Sisters that ain't gonna change. We still got the blood of Jacob running through our veins, so we gotta come together. Do our food thing, drop us out the ship forever. We gotta stop all this shit. Yeah. yeah. I'm uncomfortable with gossiping, uh, so don't come and talk to me until you talk to him. Uh, do he know how you feel about him right now? Have you gave him the opportunity to hash it out? Have you been you operating wickedly? Straight up. I'm probably next on your list, you a hater. And I ain't about to share your space, I'm cool. Don't catch me at the same table or the same room, no thank you. I don't want to hear all that noise, dude. Romans 16 and 17 say avoid you. Opposite side, never tell a matching story. Coming like you innocent, but that ain't what he told me. Y'all need to have a talk and I'll be your witness. Peeping as I listen, stories get to sounding different, man. Man, man, man. That ain't what y'all said before. Both of y'all violated. Forgive it and let it go. The righteousness of the Bible, I'm a man of that. So brotherly love, count on me to stand for that. I never turn down an apology. Never hesitate to give one when the problem meets. So if we on some bad terms, come and talk to me. Since I ain't tripping off of you, you tripping off of me. You see, I'm all about fixing things. Right. I'm collecting enemies, benefiting me. Yeah. I don't know how or how you're dealing with you. I could be going against him when I go against you. You hear that? Yeah. See, that's the mind we got to think with. Yeah. The road from Ezekiel 3, eat this. Yeah. And it be in your mouth, it's honey for Sweet sweetness. Sweet. Oh, son of man, understand in your sweet this. This. I have a vision past the wickedness hey. We joyful and singing songs in the wilderness hey. Believe we gon' have to peacefully live as one. one And you ain't making it if you refuse to get it done Ooh. Get your pride out the mix, it ain't about no, you not. I'm down to earth, I know it say we lose quite a few Why? Cause they just ain't gon' get it Love and unity and mercy ain't the reason why they in it Hindered by the adversary to keep everybody tripping Planted by the heavenly leader, make sure the elect is risen In order for some to win it Many gotta lose, father didn't grant the wisdom They in the scriptures confused, they got wicked intentions Addicted to doing wrong, in fact, let me move on I'm speaking on this too long It ain't for everybody, nah, it's only your remnant And we ain't got long, nah, it's only a minute all praises to a higher in the name of Shire. We coming out the mud, the Bible called out the Maya. Ho! If they ain't with your camp, so what? Ho, ho! If they ain't with no camp, so what? And if they with the camp, so what? The problem ain't camp. The problem is just swole up. Stick a needle in yourself. Let the air out. out. Talking out the side of your neck. What you talking about? How you know what the most high is up to? How he choosing to produce his multitude and through roots? Put one finger in your point and feedback that juice. Ain't gon' matter when the beam will come and smack you. Cause they ain't about to separate you by a cat, bro. Cross you in the manhole, stiffer than the statue. I'm with the gathering of Christ and that ain't gon' change. Loyal to the ones that makes me put me on game. Might not be at the Sabbath gatherings and holy days. But if you ever need me, break the grind, on the way. You ain't got to show up at our holy days either. Do your thing where you at. I ain't even got to see you. 
still love you every piece of piece of evil speaker. Cause the thing is gonna come when I'm going meet you. It ain't gonna matter that we don't believe the same thing. That don't mean I wanna see you dead. We don't gang bang. Most high law, how much she got in judgment. And that's such about this, you my brethren. It's time to stop all this division and respect the brother. You hate somebody, you don't know you you're a neglectful brother. Suffering that Willie Lynch syndrome. Having too much fun in your captivity, let's get home. Never mind these sidewalks in this asphalt. Going pain streets, waiting on the socks, real tough. Spiritual body, spread your wings and black off. Eating the floor at the sides of a basketball. You never witnessed this without a peaceful heart. No, you never witnessed this without that evil talk. Accused of being a dreamer where the scripture was. Except for now you're two and one when you get it though. He said he came not to bring peace, but the swore. He didn't mean it for those following him, no. How would you feel if you're looking your house? This is your sons trying to tear each other's guts out. Laying all over the place, bleeding out the mouth. Furniture destroyed, everything upside down. You can't convince me what you're doing is right. And that's the fruit of the spirit, hold the place in your mind. Where the love, where the joy, where the peace, no suffering. All I see is strife and no mercy for the brethren. Where the genius, goodness, and temperance. All I see is love and many watching cold pendulum. Where the meekness, look at how it ended. It against us, there is no law. How I'm tripping it. We all beg and know not what we're dipping in. Look, cause it's all the greatest thing to have place to me. And we live together. Together, together. Until the 12th. The 12th. I've never, I've never, I've never. 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 I've never.
It is the Father's will to get these things done, and though time to time, because he loves us so much, he give us an opportunity to become useful tools in his box. And sometimes we forget, you see, and the evidence that we forget is followed by how we respond when somebody does not agree with us or when somebody rejects what we say. When you fly off and you start responding in a way to where you are in your feelings, you are not doing the work of the Most High. What you're doing is for vain self-glory, and it's all because you're still a child. You're still a child, and you have not learned the proper way to get things done. So that's what we're going to look at on today. On today. Now, let's start here. Let's start here. Because we still got a lot of fighting out there. And here's what I'm going to say. Let's let the scriptures do the speaking. Let's let the scripture do the speaking. That's how we're going to do that. That's how we're going to do that. We're going to go to Galatians 4th chapter. So, Galatians 4th chapter. Can somebody please be mindful to put these up? Shalom, or shall I say peace, Cousin Kurt. Well, Kurt, I ain't seen you in so many years, man. I ain't seen you since I was a kid, and you was driving around in the yellow Coupe de Ville Cadillac in Minnesota. Boy, I ain't seen you in that long. But you look good. I see you on, uh, on the Facebook. But you look good, Cousin. You're still my cousin. I'm looking forward to the day where I get the chance to see you, boy. Shalom, Brother Milligan. You ain't seen Kurt in longer than I have. I ain't seen him in the shoot. That was back in the 80s. And uh, I know you ain't seen him neither. Shalom, shalom. Okay, so so now we're going to deal with the learning. And we're dealing with our babies, our brothers and sisters. And let me, let me mark who our brothers and sisters are. Our brothers and sisters are the ones that's running around here still fighting, still arguing with each other, still calling each other out of their names. Those are our those are our children. Those are our children. And and they they they, they do they do those things as a, you know what? When you see one that had walked with the father for a while, one that has some years on the individual, and you see one that go and deal with with one of the younger men or women, and rather than the younger man or woman receiving what's being said, they want to come back and try to throw scriptures at you. These are who these are the people that we're talking about because these are the children, you see. And it's no different than your child when they start growing up. Once they reach the age of 15 to 16, they start to think that they know more than you, who are the parent. Every now and then you have to slap them across the head or slap them in the mouth and remind them of who you are so that they'll remember who they are. You are the child. You understand what I'm saying? I am the adult. And so you know what? You need to listen. And for those children that do not listen to their parents, they're no different than the brothers and sisters out there that will not give heed or ear to what the elders have to tell you. All right? And when we say elders, we're not using the term elder loosely as it's those some type of title. We're simply talking about if I'm a grown man and you a young man, if I'm a grown man and I'm 51 years old and you a young man or a wo young woman and you 32 years old, 38 years old, even 40 years old, maybe 25 years old, and I try to give you some godly instruction because I know what I'm talking about because of my life experience coupled with the understanding of the word, and then you come back trying to challenge me. You're the person that we're talking about, and the father will beat your butt just like a parent will beat a child's butt. You see, but the Most High is merciful to us, even as a parent is merciful to their children. But eventually it comes to a point to where that child is going to get his butt kicked. And this is what I'm saying to many of you younger brothers and sisters, that when we try to correct you on things that you are putting out there that may not be right, simply because you don't understand, you take and harden yourself against that, and then you take a stand as though you know the grand subtotal of the Father's program. Well, you see, the Father's saying, you know, you're very disrespectful because now you're going against the very ones that I put in the earth to help you to become a blessing 
and to walk my will out. So, let's read. Verse 4, chapter 1 says, Now I say, this is our beloved brother Paul speaking. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, he is no different from a slave, even though he be Lord over all. Okay, now you got two classes, you got two people that he had drawn lines of distinction of. He said, but listen, just because you're a child of the Most High, you find out that you are Israel. That don't make you no better off than nobody else. Because as long as you're a child, you are no different than somebody that's still in the Christian church. And the evidence is that you still do the same things that somebody that is in the Christian church do. Because of your ignorance and because of your lack of knowledge, you continue to act like a child. You pout when you correct it. You understand what I'm saying? You get mad when you're chastised. You know, you'll turn your back and run away from people when you don't get your way because you are pouting like a little bitty kid. And that is how our brothers and sisters do. When somebody disagrees with them or somebody correct them, they are mad. They are pouting like little babies. They'll go block you off their page and they'll go do all of these type of things simply because they are acting out. And if these things right here come to make us understand where you at in your growth and in your maturity. And it don't matter because the heir can be walking around with the Bible because it belongs to him. But as long as he is a child, he is no different. You will be a you will be a person walking around with the Bible, acting just like somebody that ain't never came in contact with the Most High. And that is what many of you do. You see? Because you ain't receiving no correction. So it said, when we see our brothers and sisters that are in this condition, those that have grown into maturity, their response and the way that they act or respond to a certain matter comes to make you understand where they're at in their growth and their maturity so that you will know how to deal with them. Because you got to be able to draw lines of distinction between punishment that's going to go to a three-year-old versus an eight-year-old versus a 19-year-old. And the only way you can draw lines of distinction is you have to look and you have to watch and you have to look at the way that people respond. And they respond come to tell you what age they are. So we understand that some people, by their response, I just say, okay, and walk on. Because you respond like a three-year-old. And no grown person got no business putting their hands on a three-year-old. Now, there are some other people that respond like a seven-year-old. But a seven-year-old have a meek spirit so that they can, they can at least receive a little bit of correction. You understand what I'm saying? Now, some people respond like a 19-year-old. Those are the people that's going to be able to receive the reproof and then receive it and then grow by it. But these things come to show us where people are at in their maturity level so that we don't waste our time. We know that no three-year-old on the planet can comprehend the deep things of the Most High. So why would we waste time going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth with somebody that's three-year-old and I'm 19 or I'm 27? You see? Now, but this is what the this is what the most high saying that the heir, as long as you are a child, you're entitled to the promises of the most high. You're entitled to all of the benefits of the most high, and they belong to you. But as long as you're a child, you don't differ nothing from a slave. And so guess what that means? Even though the promises are yours, you they can't even be released to you because you don't know what to do with them. See, many of you, many of you still have this childlike mindset, even though you are heir, that the father can't even release the goodness to you that he desires to release because you won't grow up. So let's see how it is that you're going to grow up. And many people don't want to grow up. You'll stay a little child forever. You'll stay a little child forever because you do not want to go through the process that the father have carved out in order to make you grow up. He said the heir, as long as he is a child, he is no different from a slave, even though he's lord over all. He, he had been hired to $10 million, but he can't be trusted with $10 because he's still a child. He don't understand the value of money. He don't understand the uh, the value of wealth. He don't know how to use it. It's what the father's saying. Even though you have inherited the kingdom and all the riches of my world and the riches of my, my grace and my glory, he said, I can't give you none of it. 
You don't get none of it because you don't know how to handle it. You wouldn't know what to do if I release my word, if I release my power. You wouldn't know what to do with it because you don't take a 38 and put it in the hands of a three-year-old kid. How many children have you known or heard that got a hold to a gun and then the gun became a destructive force in somebody's life because they were not trained and they were not old enough to learn how to use the power that they had. And this is how it is with many of our brothers and our sisters that are in the scripture. You got the scripture and you throwing the scripture out there, but you're still a little child. So the scripture becomes like a destructive force in the hands of somebody that have never been taught on how to use it. And if we are speaking to you and the spirit or lines these things up with you, you need to go and sit down somewhere and allow somebody to teach you how you are supposed to use what it is that you have. Now, verse two says, Verse 1 capped it off by saying, even though he's Lord of everything. Verse 2 said, but he is under tutors and governors until the appointed time of the Father. That is the Father's process. He said, because if the heir, who is a child, is on the same level of a slave, even though he's Lord over everything, the only way for him to become entitled to the things that he have inherited, he must be brought up under tutors and governors until the appointed time. Now, a tutor is one that is able to teach the child his responsibility, what he have inherited, how to use the things that he have been given. It teaches him who he is, what his purpose is. The governors keep you in line. The governors keep watch over the child. They're like walls that have been built up. The governors, they govern a situation. Make sure that the child stays on the right track. Make sure that the child, if he gets $25, the governor makes sure that the $25 gets spent in a way that's productive and not wasted. The governors show the child how to stay on track and then give and then incorporate those things that he is being taught by the tutors. The governors help him to incorporate them things into their life and then see them working at work. He said the child, his heir, if he ever going to inherit the things of the most high, then he must come up under the tutors. Those that the Most High have put in the earth that have an understanding and a comprehension of his word and of their purpose, of the child's purpose. Nobody knows the child, what the child better than the parent. You see? Some of our brothers and sisters, you got to learn these lessons because you running around here talking, I don't need nobody. I don't need to sit up under nobody. I don't need this. Don't. Well, you know what? That's why you're making a fool out of yourself. That's why you're making a complete mess out of everything. Let's take some of our children, some of our sisters that are children, for instance. And so we got some of our sisters out here that are children. They taught scriptures too. They taught scriptures too. But when the elder or somebody go to correct them, what do they do? They try to fight back. Instead of silencing yourself, you try to fight back. You try to fight back with somebody that you can't even contend with. And the only thing that's going to happen is that you're going to be brought to shame before the whole world because of your rebellion. And many of our sisters, just like our brothers, we throw things out there and then we come back and try to use certain things as a defense. But I say this to some of my sisters. Many of my sisters that are in scripture, they have a dear love for our beloved brother Paul as well, too. You know what I'm saying? I say some of the things to my dear sisters. If you have that much love and respect for our beloved brother Paul, then why not take his advice and keep silent? Keep quiet so that you can learn something. It, it, why, you see, this comes to show you where our brothers and sisters are at in their maturity. You see, the scripture will pull the pants off of you. The scripture will tear the drawers and the panties and the bra. It'll tear the whole everything off of you before the father's people because they need to know who they are able to trust and who is walking according to the spirit. So if Paul says this, I would that women would remain silent because Adam did not sin, Eve did. And because of her sin, uh, and now everything is in an uproar. He said, now, now, listen, 
this is instruction. But children can't take the very instruction that they're trying to dish out. You see? You'll have to be of a full age in order to receive tough instructions. Some instructions come tough. They come to challenge you. It's a challenge to any woman to close her mouth. You see? Anytime a woman starts contending with a man, she has already crossed off. She is no longer in no type of service where the father is concerned. Because the father calls her to submissiveness and obedience because she was never placed in a leadership position. So how could she ever jump out in front of a man and lead anything? And if a man comes to a sister in that type of manner, based on how she responds, it's going to come to tell us where she's at in her growth level or her maturity. You see? Because the same scriptures that y'all trying to throw out, you got to live by. You see, the father is long suffering. The father is merciful. Thank the most high for those people that have walked in the scripture for a long time that understand that because you got to understand this. I don't care how old you are. Everybody's a human being. Everybody have feelings. Everybody have a personality. Everybody have emotions. You understand? But thank the father for those that have grown up, that they have ran in there and snatched their emotions or their personal feelings out of it. Because the, the, some of us uh, receive some hurtful things in the name of love in somebody. You get dirt through back in your face. But we thank the Father for the men and the women that have grown past their personal feelings, that when the people or the children that they're loving turn around and throw dirt in their face, that they are still able to embrace them and forgive them because of their ignorance. And then pray for them that the Father will continue to be uh, merciful and long-suffering, that he don't allow a hammer to just, just drop on them. So these are some of the things that we're dealing with. But the, 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 the child is up under tutors and governors. See, the Father has an appointed time to bring understanding to, to the children who are, are heirs to his promises. There is a part of a, a point in time. It takes time to come into the fullness of the purpose of who you are when you come to understand that you are Israel. We know that understanding you are Israel is exciting because we never had a name. We know it makes us zealous to want to run in the scriptures and start shredding up everything. We know that. We know that. But it is a point in time that the Father would bring understanding to, to you. It's a point in time that he brings understanding to us because we all have to go through the same process. And many times our younger brothers and sisters are so zealous and so impatient that you want to be where somebody that's been walking with the Father 40 years, you want to be there in two weeks. And you want to think that you can, you don't know. But see, you don't get like that. The Father have a point in time. And you have to be up under tutors and up under governors. And that's why I always be saying this. Never in my life have I classified myself as nobody's elder. I never put a title on myself, period, because the scripture tells us not to do that. However, that has nothing to do with what people call you. People call you things because they see something in you that represent a God type of authority. They see something in you, and so they put these things on you. But I always say, don't call me elder. Don't call me elder. If I come to tell you something and try to correct you, don't call me elder and you're going to rebel against me. You see, if you call me elder, that means that the Father have already given me something that surpasses your understanding. You see? Because it's according to his purpose. That means that if somebody call me elder, they only call me elder because they believe that, it, that I'm walking with the Father and I have an understanding of the Father's word in such a way that if they call me, I am able to lead them in the right direction where the scripture is concerned. Not where I'm concerned. I don't want nobody following me. Matter of fact, I don't want you to stay behind me too long. Because if you stay behind me long enough, you'll see some, something in me that, that make you not want to call me elder. So my job is to immediately point you in the direction of the Father and of the Father's will and of the Father's word. Sometimes the word needs to be interpreted properly. Sometimes you need to be led to a word that you didn't know existed. Sometimes you need to know how you're going to apply the word that you have learned. 
These are the purposes for men that are older because they have life experience. They have learned how to apply the word. But it is a disgrace to call a man or a bigger or elder, elder woman an elder. And then when you come to them or they come to you out of love, you reject what they have to say. Well, you know what? You're no elder at all. Because the child is a disgrace to his parent. That's why the scriptures say, honor your father and your mother. Does that mean that everything that I say is right? No, it don't. That's why I'm not going to tell you anything. If I can't show it to you in the scripture, he said, look, if you can't give an answer, a scriptural answer, put your hand over your mouth. If I can't lead you to the scripture, I'll put my hand over my mouth. I just pray for you. All right? So, strong, um, so the uh, the servant, the uh, the child, as long as he, the heir, as long as he's a child, he differs no way from a slave, even though he's Lord over everything. But when he comes up under tutors and he is taught and he comes up under governors, that means that governors bring discipline to your life. He said, then the father say, now is the appointed time. He had been through grade school. He had been through middle school. He had been through uh, high school. He had been through college. Now is the appointed time for him to walk across the stage and receive his degree. Now, how many of our brothers and sisters you think have been through grade school, uh, grade school, middle school, high school, and college where the scripture is concerned? We got people that ain't got out of the third grade that's, still, that's trying to handle the Bible. There was a brother that told me, I heard a man say, say something on the radio some odd years back. He said, if you study anything for four years, you'll be known in your neighborhood. He said, if you study any, if you study something for eight years, you'll be known in your city, in your state. He said, if you study something past 12 years, you'll be known in your country. This is how the will of the Father operates. You don't just get that. The same way you got a college degree, all of the schooling that you had to go through to bring you to the place to where you got a degree. It's the same way with the Father's program. Because the things in this world don't shake a stick at what belongs to the Father's. And you think that you can go spend 12, 20 years of your life educating yourself according to the systems of this world. And then you can be in truth for three years. And now you possess all of the power and the goodness that the Most High have for you. Then you have sadly lost the best part of your everlasting mind. Yep. So, so let's get that. Let's get that. Now I got Satan jumping all through my iPad. He didn't change the whole screen and everything. But that's okay because we was about through with that. He was up under tutors and governors to the appointed time of the Father. That's Galatians 4th chapter. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you how we all have to go through the same process. Now, because I remember when I read this passage of scripture, it was back in 1997, somewhere along there, when this passage of scripture got read. It was back in 1997, 1998. I done had nowhere near to understand it, but I realized this, that if I was ever going to get it, I was the child that it was talking about. I needed to find and connect myself with people that had what I needed, that knew what I didn't know, that had the answers to the questions that I didn't have. See? Verse 3 says, Even so, when we, the elders, when we were children in the faith, because everybody on the planet has been a child. Everybody goes through the same process. You come out of your mother's womb, you are a toddler, you are a suckling child, and then you begin your life and your growth process. Even when we, elders were children in the faith of the Most High at one time. We could open up the Bible and couldn't understand a word. We'd be trying with everything we got. Start reading the Bible as soon as we see such and such begot, such and such begot, such and such begot, such and such, and we just get discouraged. Oh, I just can't deal with this. I can't understand this book. It said even when we 
the person that you looking at and you think that, oh man, God, they gave them so much word and they so powerful in the word, that person right there, even when we, when we were children, we were under bondage of the elements of this world. We were there too. That's why we know. You can't get what you can't get what the father had given me. You can't get what the father had given young King William. You can't get what the father had given Isaiah, Yasharala, uh, many other brothers. You can't get what the father had given uh, 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 Prince Ammonia ben Israel. Prince Aziel, you can't get what the Father have given them people. You can't get what the Father have given young Prince, mighty Hebrew. You can't get what the Father have given none of these other people that you see on Facebook that are able to teach the word and teach the scripture. You can't get it unless you go through the same process. All of us had to be up under teachers and governors. Because even though we learned up under sun, we would still get off track because we were still held captives into the bondage and the elements of this world. So even while we were learning and while we were getting taught, the governors came in handy because we still was going to smoke some weed. We still going to smoke some primo. We still going to the club. I, we, I, we up under, we getting taught. We getting taught, but we are children growing up in the faith. We're still going to the club on the weekends. Because even though we're getting taught, we have not learned how to use what it is that we are being taught. And we it had not come to its fullness. But we still cheating on our wives and, and want to be players and all of that. Even as we are being taught, this is where the governorship come up under. And the Holy Spirit is the governor that the Father put around us. The governor brings conviction where, where as it relates to the things that we have been taught. And he bring that back and say, you know, just go against what you've been taught. You got to step your game up. And the father just, father, give you a good whooping. I ain't going to do that no more. I ain't going to do that no more. See, even when we, we had to go through this process in order to get where we was at, because the father ain't releasing his power to nobody that's not going to go through the same process. So if you warn that you can't handle no correction, shalom, cousin, uh, uh, cousin Larry. I'm glad you stepped on there because one of the tutors and the governors that I came up under, my mama died when I was 10 years old. I never forget my cousin, my big cousin. That's always tell the story of how he said, man, I remember the day you was born. It was snow up to my waist while we tracked through the snow to get to the hospital to go and see mm -hmm. you. And then from that moment, my cousin became the tutor and the governor that I was up on, that was up over me and began to teach me, teach me, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't be in jail, you can't have no record, you need to own your own business, you need to work for yourself, you need to do these things, you need to, do you not know that up under that, there was many times that I wanted to do something different, there was many times I got fussed at and all of that, but that teaching and him coming by to make sure, checking on me while I'm at school, make sure I ain't in no trouble. It was that right there that had brought me to this point where I'm at now. You see? And everything that I was taught at the hand of my big cousin had played out into my life. I ain't never been to jail. I ain't never had a record. You understand what I'm saying? I ain't never killed nobody. Ain't nobody never killed me. I always try to be good to people. I ain't always been good to people, but I always try to be good to people. You understand what I'm saying? I've owned my own business. That's why I came up. I didn't work for people. Everything that I was taught, I had to be up under that. You have to be up under that too. If your life is going to have any type of productive meaning, then you have to bring yourself up under people that are living productive and meaningful lives. And if you're a person that's just out here, you want to do what you want to do whenever you get ready, just live any kind of life that you want to live, that's on you. Have at it. But you'll be a slave, even though you're Lord over all. He said, even when we, when we as children, some people look at me like, oh, elder, you, I had one of my young kings. He said, boy, boy I'm telling you, you got to be one of the most powerful men in the world. And I just laugh because I want to tell you. I wanted to tell you, I'm one of the most raggediest men in the world. But he looked at what the Father had done for me. And what I try to show him is that what the Father had done for me is no different than he will do for you if you are willing to go through the same process. You see?
We all have to go through the same process, and all that he give us is not all we can have. We can have as much as we're willing, willing to commit ourselves to or to, you know, to chase after. So let's get that out the way because we want our young brothers and sisters to understand it ain't one way to get, ain't but one way to get what the Father have for you. You got to go and hook yourself up with some people that have what you what you chasing for. Whatever it is that you looking for, you got to go and find the people that's already doing it. And you got to bring yourself up under them. And when they tell you doing something wrong, you got to pay attention to them. And they tell you you need to do this, you got to pay attention to it. And I'm talking to a young man that's wanting to be married and want him a wife. And I tell him, God wants you. God will give you the greatest thing he ever made, which was a woman. But he wants the greatest thing that you got, which is you. You sacrifice yourself and give yourself wholeheartedly to him. And then he'll give you what he got. But you can't expect him to give you the best thing he got. But you won't give him the best thing that you got. You see, when we give you instruction like that, based on not whether you take it or not, that, that comes to tell us whether or not you really want what the Father has for you. You see, everybody ain't going to get it. So we're going to deal with these issues today. And some of my, some of my brothers and sisters out there that you want to keep on, you think you can fight? You think you can fight with the elders out here? You think you can fight with the elders out here and still feel like you serving the most high? You think you can fight with somebody that's been walking in the scripture for 35, 40, 55, 60 years and you doing the work of the most high? You're fooling yourself and you will be stripped butt naked before the entire social media arena. So let's go on. So let's deal with this here. No, I'm going to connect something to this. Let's go put a precept on top of this right here. Let's put a precept on top of this right here. Strong meat is for them who by reason of use. Uh, let's go to, let's go to Hebrews 5th chapter. We're still dealing with the learning now. We're still dealing with the learning. See, one of the things that I was taught as a child, I was taught to always be obedient to them that were over me. That meant it didn't make no difference who you was. If you was grown, your name was Mr. It was Mrs. Mr. Mrs. Some, some, some kids was forced to say, yes, ma'am, no, sir. We wasn't, but we was forced to respect. Our elders, Mr., Mrs., anybody could tell you anything. Anytime an, old, an older person, a person that was grown was speaking, we had a command to listen. Our parents didn't take nobody's word for it. They would never take a child's word over adult's word. You look at our parents now. You know, kid come home and tell a story. I remember when I was working in the school district. Some little, little boys got mad at me because I wouldn't allow them to just run over me and I had that cafeteria and everything in total order. And it went back and spread to the room and I made a derogatory comment to one of the fifth grade girls. And before anything I know, I'm all up in arms. I'm, they crawling up through me like a microscope, with a microscope, based on what some children went and lied and said. They didn't come to me. And asked me. They immediately just grabbed me. But because. Because of the effectiveness. Of the work. People knew. That that could not be so. Where other people would have been fired. The principal came to me. And she said Mr. Milligan. Because of what happened. I got to take you away from the children. But I'm going to put you down in the basement. I'm going to in the basement in the library for the next couple of days and you just chill while I go through this whole school with a fine tooth comb and get the bottom of it. And I had sleepless nights because of that. Me being labeled? Hey, I'm in my community preaching. I just came in the ministry. Me and a lie could label me as somebody of that type of nature? The news would have ate it up. I was protected from all of that. You see, when I spoke to the mother, she wasn't hearing anything. Only thing I said, hey, baby, that didn't happen. 
that didn't happen, you know. Well, 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 well you, you say what you want to say, but that didn't happen. Well, 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 I'm just going to go downtown. And you do whatever you feel like you need to do. Because at the end of the day, it didn't happen. And I owe you no explanation. Bam. That principal called me. I got up. She said, Mr. Milligan, I want you back on your post tomorrow. We found the source of the problem. There is no worries. Don't lose no sleep over this thing. She said, I want you back on your post tomorrow. When I show back up, do you know who stood up and defended me? All of those children that were from kindergarten, preschool, up to the sixth grade, all of those children, they went to that school and they got statements from every child in there. Written statements from every child in there until they got down to the few of the couple of couple of kids that when they had to write their statements, they had to tell the truth. And that's where it came out. But it was those children, those children, those teachers, those teachers knew, but it was those children. Mr. Milligan would never, Mr. Milligan would never, Mr. Milligan would never. Do you think the little girl's mother ever came back and apologized? Because that's how modern day parents are now. They will take a child's word over something. But in our day, no adult, no, no, never, never, no adult never took a child's word. If an adult said something, guess what? The kid was wrong and he was getting this, he was getting this face crashed in. That's how that go. So, but this is how some of our brothers and sisters are now. They don't want to hear no oh, correction. So let's go here. Let's go to the book of Hebrews. We're going to still deal with this learning thing. Then we're going to push on or till the phone die one. Oh, man. Yeah. Okay. Hebrews chapter 2. Verse 1. Okay. Let's look at this here. We're dealing with the issue of Hamashiach coming to sacrifice his life and, and everything. And then we're dealing with the, the call of the believers. The believers have a responsibility. Now, here's one of the things that we say. Let's look at, let's start reading at verse 8 of the fourth chapter. Though he were a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. This is Hamashiach. Everybody, you see, we don't do him no injustice because we don't show him from a standpoint of real life in humanity. Though he were a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. What kind of sense does that make? Y'all think the Messiah was just walking around here level, levitating to the place? No. He had to come up under the same process. He had to come through the same process that we have to go through in order to get what the Father has for us. That is why he is able to be able to touch, be touched with the feeling of our infirmity because there is no temptation except that is common to man because he was tempted in all of those areas and it was that temptation and that uh, suffering that brought about obedience. Oh, I ain't going to do that more. Uh -oh, please forgive me, Father. I ain't going to do that no more. I ain't going to do that no more. And y'all think that he was just somebody that was just levitating or like like Eddie Griffin say, like he was just in there walking on his bath water, playing. Man, get out of here with that mess. He said, no, you got to understand, the Messiah learned obedience through the things that he suffered. That meant that he had to be corrected. Where have you been, Jesus? Where have you been? Where have you been, Yeshua? We've been gone for two days, and we couldn't find you nowhere. And where have you been? We come all the way back here, two-day journey, and you here in the temple. Which not thou know I must be about my father's business. But he learned obedience through the things that he suffered because his mother and Joseph were worried half to death about him, and they chastised him when he got back. He learned obedience through the things that he suffered. He learned obedience to the thing that he suffered. Let's look at it. Uh, son, uh, the, the, the wedding party, they're out of wine. Listen, woman, 
Why are you coming to me about making some wine? This ain't even my hour. I'm not trying to wait, make no wine. There's a possibility that I can have a problem with the wine later on down in my life. I don't want to make nobody no wine because I might be struggling with that. Well, I made the wine. Now look at the Pharisees. Look at him. He called himself the son of God. He come eating and drinking. A glutton and a drunk. Now, let's look at the long obedience by the things he suffered. The last supper. This shall be the last day that I shall drink of the vine with you brothers. I will no longer drink of the vine until we drink it anew in the kingdom. Why would he say that? Because they were drinking every day. They were drinking every day. And the evidence is that, is that this was a thing that caused him to learn obedience. Because it brings a level of suffering when somebody said, look at him. He's a glutton and a drunkard. He coming eating and drinking. He learned obedience through the thing that he suffered. And he suffered just like we suffered. We had to go through the process of suffering in order to learn just like he did. And he is our example. If you say he learned obedience by the things he suffered, how much more are we? And if you can't receive uh, uh, reproof or correction, how are you going to learn anything? If somebody loves you enough to chastise you or reprove you or correct you, you ought to thank the Father for that. Okay, let's see. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all of them that obey him. Called of God a high priest after the order of Melchizedek, of whom we have many things to say, and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. Who's dull of hearing? The one that thinks he knows something already. Never mind the fact Paul said, them that think they know something don't know anything that they ought to know because their hearing had been dulling. They will not listen to anything because they think they already know. Verse 12, for in time that you should be teachers, time you should be teachers, you have need that one teach you again which be the first principles of the oracles of God. What are the first principles of the oracles of God? The first principles of the oracles of God is this, that we have to come back and teach those that should be teachers by now. We have to come back and reteach them that the heir, as long as he is a servant, as long as he is a child, differs nothing from a servant because you have not obeyed the scripture. You will not sit at the feet of the tutors and the governors therefore you will not learn the things that you're supposed to learn and you cannot act the way you're supposed to act because you lack discipline because you don't have no governors over you therefore the father cannot release to you the things that he wants to release to you and then we have to come back and say for in the time that you should be teaching brother and sister that always got something crazy to say in the time that you could be teaching which brings me something that I'm going to mention. And I'm going to call this brother by name because he didn't call me by name many times. It's not going to be nothing bad. But the brother goes by the name of Amram. Amram. And time to time I see Amram on my page and he ain't never got nothing good to say. And he just haul out, well, this ain't this stupid. Or this ain't this dumbass. Or this ain't this, you coward. He, he, he never have anything good to say. Let me tell you something about this brother. I have tiptoed on this brother's page, and I have watched this brother's teaching the scripture on several occasions. I have not yet once came across anything that that brother was teaching that I didn't agree with or I didn't identify with. As a matter of fact, I said to myself, hmm, this brother's pretty good. This brother been walking in the scripture for quite a while. But the point that I'm making is that he is still a child because he do not know how to use what it is that the father had given him. If he was up under tutors and governors that can help him see or understand that the word of God is never to be used to destroy one of your brothers or to make war against one of your brothers. If he ever could come up under somebody to help him understood these things, that is why on his videos that he made, he only have two people watching because the father sometimes had to come in and block 
that. He ain't giving you no power because you ain't learned how to use it yet. And even though I ain't never had nothing to say bad about the brother, and I'm not going to say nothing bad about the brother, the brother can say what he want to say about me because the way that he acts and responds when it comes to cursing me and calling me out of my name, I understand that he is a child that wants some attention and he using the scripture to do it. But I ain't never disagreed with him. And as I said before, I think that some of the things that he have taught was good. And they got a vast understanding of the scriptures. But you know what? God's power in a in an unlearned man's hand as it relates to using it will become a destructive force. Because there is no kind of way that you can have God's power to come over there and curse your brother out and try to drag him out into a fight so that you can use the word of the Most High against them as a weapon. See, the Father don't operate like that. But these things don't come to make us war with each other. They come to make us understand where our brothers are at in their thinking and how we are to deal with them. So this is for you. Brother Amron, or uh, Aram, whatever the name is, this is for you. I am your brother. I am never going to come out and fight with you about anything. I am convinced in what the Most High have done for me, he have done for me. You stay focused on what the Most High have done for you. Should you ever need me for anything, just note this one thing. You are forgiven for all the ugly things that you have ever said to me. I have never cursed you back. The only thing I have ever said is, okay, peace. Okay, peace, brother. Well, why you want to make peace with me? I ain't your brother. I ain't your brother. You know what? You are making manifest that you do not belong to the most high. Because if you was the most high's child, you would love me. See, that's why I'm able to love you in spite of the things that you might have to say. So I hope that you get your hands on this video so that you can come to understand that you can call me anything you want. The Messiah said you can curse me and that's okay. You can be forgiven for that. Well, if you can curse the Messiah and be forgiven for that, how much more can you curse me and be forgiven? He said if you curse the Father, the Heavenly Father, you can be forgiven for that. Well, if you can curse God, how much more should I be able to be cursed by my brother and then he be forgiven? He said, but those that blaspheme the Holy Spirit, them are the ones that won't be. So I'm not worried about you cursing me out. I'm secure with who I am and you don't never have to worry about it. And when you see this video, I hope it pricked your spirit in a way that causes you to start growing like a weed. Because when you start growing and you got some governorship and some discipline in your life and learn how to use it, the a father said, now will be the appointed time. Now I can release you my power because I know you'll never take my power and hurt one of your brothers with it. But right now, you ain't ready for that, son. You're not ready for that, son. Yeah, you're not ready for that, you see? And anybody that knows, they can go on there and they can see. They can see the conversations. Now, okay, cool. So maybe we're going to see, who is this brother? Lo and behold, I sat there and I listened. He never have his face on there. He have his face, you know, he had a camera aimed at the wall. I'm like, what you scared of? What you scared of? Okay, but the thing is, hey, man, I sat there and listened. I said, ooh. Ooh, I even gleaned a couple of them. Ooh, that was good. That was good. That, that was good. That brother's pretty good. And, and I agree with what he was saying. Only problem I got is that there had to be a misunderstanding for you not to agree with what I'm saying. Because you call me false prophets and everything else. Well, I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. But I don't do the same thing. We don't do people like they do us. Because all of us are not the same age. We're to pray for in each other, that the Father will enlighten the eyes of their understanding. They, they, see, you can have a vast knowledge of Scripture, and you can be missing Scriptures like this. He that can't not rule his own spirit is like a city without walls. That means that no matter what God give you, when you can't rule your spirit, you have no rule over your spirit, Satan can come in and climb over them walls and just rob you for everything that God just done for you. Because you got no self-control. You're flipping out. He that is soon angry, deal it foolishly. I make a couple of comments on some people, and they get so mad before you know it, I'm an MF, or I'm a B-ass nigga, or I'm something. He that is soon angry, deal it foolishly. It come to let you know where people are in their maturity and their growth level. 
It don't come so that you can start fighting back with them. We don't fight back with people. Shalom, young King William. That's what we mean, young King William talk about. We don't fight back with people. I mean, the first encounter I had with young King William, young King William, he about had it up the ear. He said, it's over. It's over. I'm not even playing with him no more. It's about. I took up to politely, politely crawled over there to young King William and said, look, young King William. I said, young King William. I said, young King William. Don't worry about them people. I said, when people act like that, it come to tell you what their maturity growth level is. If I tell you, we got through talking, said, you, you know what? I hear you, Elder. You're right. I, well, I wasn't even no elder then. You know what I mean? But we had that conversation because I wanted him to stay focused. Stay focused. Some people try to drag you out. Them people been trying to drag me out and get me out there for a long time. You know what I mean? But it won't work. It won't work. You see? Love is the key to unlock every door. Love is the overriding factor, which brings me to another thing that our young brothers, why they need to be up under tutors and governors. Let's look at the next thing. Let's look at the two great laws. Let's show you how many of our brothers and sisters misinterpret these, these simple scriptures. Yep. Yep. Loving the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, soul, and strength. That's what we're going to look at. We're going to look at the two laws. We're going to look at the two laws. We're gonna, and we're going to show you why it's important for our youngsters to be up under tutors and governors until the appointed time of the father. Let's go. All right. Let's go to Mark. Let's go to, let's go to Matthew. Let's go to Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. I don't want that. We're just going to go to Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22. Let's go to Matthew 22. Then we're going to show you this. Let's show you how many of our brothers and sisters that are using the scripture. They are still children. And when the tutor or the teacher comes to try and show them something. They tell the teacher off. Like some of our kids doing in school right now. Everything going to reproduce after its own kind. If you're the person that's doing these things to the elders in Israel that's trying to teach, these are the things that your child, child are going to be doing to the people that's trying to teach them. Everything going to reproduce after its own kind, and then you're going to reap a world of trouble. So let's see here. Let's go here. Where is that at? Okay. Let's start reading at verse 35. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him, saying, Do you have any idea how many people ask questions to come and tempt? They don't want to know the answer. They just want to ask the question to tempt you, see if they can get you to say something that will create an argument or something of that nature. They, see, the Messiah went through the same thing. He said, then one who was a lawyer, just the fact that he was a lawyer, he was an educated man. He had been to college. He had been got his degrees and everything. He is an educated man, and he is, he is stepped before the elder of elders. The son of the most high. He got puffed up with pride and thought that his education now could cause him to go and stand in front of, of the one that he had heard about all over town. All over town. He's a bad one. The teacher is good. The teacher is healing sight. The teacher is doing this. The teacher is doing that. And then you got one that think that because they know a bunch of scripture or been in the word, now they want to come and step in front. 
He wanted to step in front of the elders of elders because of his education. Some of our Christian brothers that been to cemetery and theology school, this is the mindset that they have, that they think now they can come and step in front of the elder of elders and challenge them because of their education. Well, you know what? Us brothers that have been anointed to teach things, we are like the Messiah. We are calm, we are cool, we are collected. We fear no man because we are armed with scripture. He that God sin speaketh the words of God. For God giveth not him the spirit unto him by measure. Those that have been anointed to teach, those that have been anointed to govern, they fear no man because the Father have made a rich deposit and his promises that he'll give them whatever he needed. And he who God had sent is Hamashiach. God sent Hamashiach in the world. And Hamashiach only spoke God's word. Nobody else's. And God gave Hamashiach the spirit without measure. So when this young educated lawyer came stepping to him, this is what happened. He said, the lawyer asked him a question, tempting him and said, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? The Messiah said unto him, thou shall love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy mind and thy soul and thy strength. This is the first and great commandment. Verse 39, and the second is likened unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commands hang all the law and the prophets. Now, now, let's keep reading. While the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, saying, what do you think of Christ? Who is he? They say unto him, the son of David. He said to them, how do you know? I mean, he said, how then did David, how then doth David in spirit call him Lord, saying, the Lord said, I ain't going through that because I, I wanted to get the other part. Now we know that the Messiah told the rich young ruler, the rich, rich young lawyer, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength. That's the first great commandment. Love thy neighbor as thyself. It's likened to the first one. In some other passages it says, on these two laws hang all the laws of the prophets. So you got many of our brothers and sisters that think, well, these are the two great laws. That, that only that's, Jesus did away with everything else. But let's look at this key word in there. On these two laws hang all the laws of the prophets because see the the the, the rich young man the, the rich young man you know he was asked to do something that he may inherit eternal life because he was asked he said i didn't kept the laws you see and then he said well okay go sell everything you have to the poor he said he couldn't do it he walked away weeping because he had great substance now let's get some understanding on these two laws, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy mind, all thy soul and strength. Bam! Love your neighbor as thyself. It's the second great command likened to the first. On these two laws, hang all the laws of the prophets. When you start dealing with loving the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy might, all thy soul, all thy strength, you are dealing with every single law as it pertains to the things that the Most High had told us. Thou shalt not have no other God before me. That's hanging on the love of the Lord thy God. Remember the Sabbath, keep it holy. That's hanging on the love of the Lord thy God. The dietary law is hanging on the Lord love thy God. It's hanging. All of these laws hanging on there. So if you're going to honor this, love the Lord thy God, with all thy heart, mind, and soul, then you have to honor every single law that's attached to the Most High as it relates to him and us as individuals. Love your neighbor as yourself. On this other half of law, hang all of the laws 
of the prophets. Thou shall not kill. Thou shall not steal. Thou shall not bear false witness. Thou shall not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shall not prostitute thy daughter. Thou shall not lay with the man as you lie with the woman. Thou shall not. Thou shall not. Everything that's dealing with how we treat each other. Every single law dealing with how we treat each other is hanging on this law right here. So in order to feel, fulfill both of these laws, then everything that's hanging on each one of them has to be fulfilled. That's understandable. Calm down with this. Yeah, yeah, Get your yeah, stuttering yeah. and stuff. Right, well, it's okay. It's all right. They know me by now. Y'all feel what I'm talking about? You get yep. excited, now, you see, see, because many things we don't understand because we ain't been taught right. And we do ourselves a grave injustice because how are you going to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength? And you don't even know what he said for you to do. I tell you all the time, if a woman, I tell my wife, don't tell me you love me. If you can't touch me, and you can't caress me, and you can't, you know, love me, because that's how I define love. You can't say that you love me, and you can't come and put your hands on me. And you know what? I don't care nothing about no words. I care about touch. Don't no man care nothing about words. You don't come and tell me that you love me, and you don't render no due benevolence to me. I can't take you in the bedroom and do what we supposed to do as a married couple. Don't tell me that you love me if you can't yield yourself to me. That's what the father's saying. How you going to tell me? How you going to honor me? How you going to love me? And you don't even know what I told you to do. Because you sure can't love me going against me. You see, how you going to love your neighbor as yourself when you don't even know what's entailed with that? You see, so many of our brothers are being deceived and don't even realize it. You see, a man going to say he love a woman and he ain't never got nothing kind to say when a woman is moved by words. Oh, baby, you're so beautiful. You're so lovely. Oh, you look ravishing today. Oh, thank you, sweetie. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? How 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 is a man going to do that? How are you gonna say you love a woman when she don't hear nothing? You see, we operate by touch. They operate by hearing words. How you gonna how you gonna how you see how you gonna feel love? The only thing you got to say is bad stuff. They never come in and just rap rub. Mm, dang, you smell good. Smell good. She ain't even had a bath yet. You just saying it because it's good for her. You see? That's how the father feel. But we have to deal with our brothers and sisters. Yep. We have to deal with our brothers and sisters. And, I, and I'm always going to deal with things that and it's not a matter of war. See, sometimes when our brothers and sisters have childlike mentalities, they mistake correction for war. You see, I've experienced this over and over again because I've been blocked by many people. They mistake my correction for war. But that comes also to show the level of maturity and growth where they at. Because if you're a child, I have, every, or I have every right to correct you if you are wrong. I have elders that can correct me. I told you, I spoke to one yesterday, <laughs> and I was corrected and received that with love in such a way that you don't ever have to worry about me speaking anything as it relates to other nations again. Ever. Because I, like anybody else, have the capacity to be wrong. And when I'm wrong, I have to repent, just like I tell anybody else to do. So that is one of the things that I'm repenting from. I'm repenting from that. I'm not dealing with the Hispanics. I'm not dealing with Esau. I'm not dealing with I'm not dealing with Ham. Them. I'm not dealing with none of that. You know why? Because I'm no authority. I'm no authority on the Hispanics. I'm no authority on Esau. And I'm no authority on the Hamites. The only thing I know is I thank God for showing me who I am today. And I thank the Father for allowing that elder to come into my life and drop them jewels in my ears. Because they brought me to this place. Now, I repent from that. 
And so I'm going to stay in my lane and I'm going to do the work that's equipped for me to do. And everybody else can fight about who Esau is. And everybody else can fight about the 12 tribe chart. Everybody else can fight about them things. As for me, I am repenting from that. So, I want to show you another one. And here's another one. Watch and see what happened. Let's just watch and see what happened. I'm about to correct something. And I want to see if it's going to be received as though it's war. Let's see. Let's go here. Let's go here. Now, what I want to do is I have brothers and sisters that call me when they come up under certain things and they want questions. They genuinely want to ask. Sometimes the people that are doing the things, uh, you know, are reputable people. They are people that that are constantly seen, that are people that know, and then they just say, well, you know, Elder, what do you think about this? Is this true? What are we talking about? We're talking about a post that has been put on there that have classified the apocryphal books as something that is false, or there's something that is witchcraft or satanic. I told them, I completely disagree. I said, I have been studying out of the Apocrypha since 1992, and I ain't ever ran across anything on such a level. I said, but what I did tell them, I told them if they thought that they, anything in there appeared to be a satanic book, they have seen nothing. I said, because when you start looking at the Testament of Solomon, you see demons being dealt with. You see magical spells being cast. You see, I said, but all of those books are a part of scripture. Not so that witchcraft and sorcery could be used against the father's people, because nothing that the father have will be used against him. As much as it is to make you aware and to bring information. So, I don't go into that, but what I will do is to show my brothers and sisters that just because you have not seen these things in my Bible that was published back in the 1800s, all of the apocryphal books were already there. Those books were there when the Bible was first put into existence, and then they were removed. How could anybody say that they are non-canical? You understand what I'm saying? Now, Everybody have a right to feel like they want to feel, so my response is not to the person that did it. My response is to the person asking the question, because what she is looking for is she is looking for feedback from my perspective or my state of, of mind. So what I want to tell you is this. Let's look at something. Here's the first thing we're going to do. First thing we're going to do is we're going to do this right here, and we're going to shift this camera around. We're going to show you something. I've been knowing this for years. For years. You see this? Lost books of the Bible. Books mentioned but not found in the Bible. Let's read some of these things. If they thought the Apocrypha books because they were unfamiliar, didn't belong in the scripture. Well, well, they got another thing coming. Look at this. The book of the covenant. Who have seen the book of the covenant before? Exodus chapter 24 verse 7. And he took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people. And they said. And they said all the Lord had said we will do. And we will be obedient. You see that? Now, that was the book of the covenant. 
You ain't talking about uh, uh, the book of Enoch and the book of Jasher and the book of Jubilees and the book. And they said all these books are witchcraft and satanic. Well, look, you know what? Those are just some of the books. But what we're trying to show you, we're trying to show you that many of the books are mentioned in Scripture but are not in Scripture. Let's look at this. The book of the wars of the Lord. Numbers. Chapter 21, verse 14. Wherefore, it is said in the book of the wars of the Lord. You see, and we can go on and on, on and on. The book of Jasher. Who said that the book of Jasher was witchcraft? Well, let's see this. Look at this, because this is the, this is the prophet Joshua speaking. Here. We have the entire book on this site. That's what they're talking about. They have it. Let's go to Joshua 10, 13. And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is it not written in the book? Let's go. Is it not written in the book of Jasser? You see what I'm saying? In, even in Samuel. In the book of Samuel, 1 Samuel 10, 25, it mentions, I mean, 1 Samuel uh, chapter 1, verse 18. You see, you see, and I, I'm not even going to go into the whole thing. I'm not even going to go into the whole thing. Because what I'm trying to do is stay focused on our brothers and sisters understanding the importance of why you need to be up under tutors and teachers and governors that can help you. Because many of you are going to go out there learning bits and pieces of information. Some of it Satan to do out there. You're just going to grab it and come back and spew it out. But you don't have no idea. See, but when people have been walking in the scripture for years, they have been pre-exposed to things that you won't see for the next 10 or 15 years unless you encounter a problem. So you got to be careful when you start talking about books of the most high that are satanic because you probably didn't understand that these books are mentioned in the scripture by the mouth of the prophets see so let's let's do it the book of Jasher and you got you got ISUPK and all these dudes <laughs> declaring that these books don't matter, these books ain't real, and they feeding all that stuff to the people, when the very books that they talking about are mentioned in the scripture by the prophets, and it's those books that are written by the prophets that are mentioned that they have sought to take out, because if we understood how to use the power of the Most High in the way that Israel used it, that caused the moon and the sun to stand still, until Israel won the battle. If we was exposed to that type of power that Israel was walking by, I could see why they would take those books out. The manner of the kingdom, the book of statutes, the book of Samuel the seer. What would they say about that? Samuel the seer. Samuel was a prophet, but we know that they'll attach the word seer to the word psychic because they can see the future. Samuel the seer, Nathan the prophet, the acts of Solomon, Shemaiah the prophet, prophecies of Abijah, the story of the prophet Edo, visions of Edo the seer, Edo genealogies, the book of Jehu, sayings of the seers, the book of Enoch, the book of Gad the seer, the epistles of, of, to Corinth, epistles to Ephesians, Epistles from Laodicea, from Laodicea to the Colossians, Nazarene prophecy source, Acts of Isaiah. You see, there are many books. All of these books that I just read, they are mentioned in the scriptures. Yep. The, the annals of King David. First Chronicles 27 chapter. Verse 24, Joab, the son of Zeruah, began to count the men, but did not finish. Wrath come on Israel, an account of his numbers, and he, number, was not, was not it entered into the book of the annals of King David? The ax 
Acts of Uzziah, 2nd Chronicle, 26th chapter. Now the rest of the Acts of Uzziah, the first and the last, did Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, write? In the, in the, it said, did, did Isaiah, the son of the prophet, did not he write in the Acts of the, the, the book of the Acts of Uzziah? The Nazarene prophecy source. And it came and dwelt in the city called Nazarene, that it might be fulfilled that which was spoken by the prophets. He shall be called a Nazarene. So you had a prophecy, a book of the Nazarene prophecies. They are all in there, even, even as it relates to our beloved brother, the Paul. Colossians 4, 16. And when this epistle is read among you, cause that be... Uh, that it be read also in the church of Laodicea, that y'all likewise read, read the epistle from Laodicea. It's an epistle of Laodicea. You see? With some of these things, I heard some comments where, it's, where it's Paul was talking about, let anybody, let anybody preach any other gospel be a curse. Well, you don't understand. There are many gospels. There are many books that have been taken out that are written, written in the scripture, and you'll have to cast Paul into that witchcraft and sorcery uh, category in order to do that because Paul himself have other books. Epistle to Corinth, 1 Corinthians 5. 5th chapter 9 verse, I wrote unto you in an epistle, not to company with fornicators. You see, Paul had books that were taken out of the Bible as well. The epistle to the Ephesians, Ephesians 3rd chapter, how by how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote afore in a few words whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. There are epistles that were taken out of the Bible as well. The book of Enoch. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these things, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. That can be precept over and over and over again in the scripture. Yeah. You know, so that's what it is. You know? That's what it is. Let's look at this. Shemaiah the prophet, 2 Chronicles chapter 12, verse 15. Now the acts of Rehoboam, the first and last, are they not written in the book of Shemaiah the prophet? There are many books that have been taken out that are written in the scripture. So brothers and sisters, hear me and understand. When somebody comes to try, and see, you know what the sad thing, here's the sad thing. It's sad when your brothers and sisters don't just take your word for it. Because, see, I'm, I'm armed with all of this information. And these things I have been knowing for years. So when I see my brothers and sisters acting in that type of manner and putting these things on there, it would really be pleasing if they would just say, oh, okay, elder, bam. No, they don't do that. You literally got to come on there and now you got to literally expose people and then and then they feel ashamed when they've been exposed. The only thing you have to do is listen. If I say it, it's because I can prove it. And if I got to keep on proving it and keep on proving it and keep on proving it, that's only going to make our brothers and sisters look bad. We got to start point, some point start understanding so that we can start learning. No elder should have to come back and keep uh, explaining the reason why he said it. Why don't you just take my word for it? If I tell you that's not true, if I tell you that that's not true, that these books are not false, that there's no witchcraft, no sorcery attached to them, and that's a, that be careful with that statement. If I tell you that, there's a reason why. It should just be accepted. You see? Because if it's not accepted, then my love for you causes me to go to a greater length. And now I go to a greater limp so that I can bring it home to where you can really see it for what it is and understand. That was never coming against you. Nobody. Nobody in that matter. So for my brothers and sisters that ask me that question, I hope that you get a greater understanding out of it.
And I hope that our brothers and sisters that feel that way, I hope that they get a better understanding out of it too. You understand what I'm saying? Because the whole point is not to be fighting against each other, but to constantly be raising each other up with understanding that we didn't previously know at first. That being said, shalom, brother Mike. Shalom. Yep, so, so it's what it is, man, but, you know, it's okay. But, you know, when stiff-necked people don't need to be out front trying to teach anybody anything, you know. And so, you know, but, and then hopefully this will encourage some of our brothers and sisters to go and do more studying, to do more studying. Because, as I said, the Father have not given us uh, all that you have is not all that you uh, have. All that he, he didn't gave you ain't all that you can have. You can have as much as you're willing to chase after. There's Amram. There's Amram right there. I hope you go back and look at this full video, brother. I really do. I really do. Because I'm going to tell you why you looking contrary to how you feel about me. We are, we are not in agreement. I don't feel the same way about you. I'd have listened to you. I'd have heard some of your teachers. It's a shame that you don't have more than two people on there watching because I think that you deserve a full audience. But the problem is because you don't know how to treat your brothers. The father is blocking up your flow because you don't understand that people that don't agree with you or share your ideology or your perspective is no reason to lash out or assault them. And you have to understand that the Father never give you his goodness as a means to wage war against your brother. I have watched many of your videos, and you ain't never knew that I was there. And I ain't came across anything that I was in disagreement with yet. But nevertheless, there is something blocking your flow up because of the way that you're treating your brother, the way you talk to your brother, the way you disrespect your brother. And that is not like the father. And I only pray for you, brother. Pray for you, brother, that one day, one day soon that the father would do something wonderful for you. That he might show you, hey, you know what? Your brother ain't no false prophet. Your brother ain't this. Your brother ain't that. You're just misunderstood on some issues. But you ain't close enough to your brother to get an understanding. I only pray for you that the Father would move on your behalf. That one day we both could use what the Father have given us as a means to raise Israel up. And I take nothing personal, brother. So, yeah. Well, see? I'm a genuine, see, I'm a genuine, I'm a, I'm a true, false, genuine prophet, y'all see that, and that's good, and I'm not mad at you for that, because you have your own reasons for feeling the way that you feel, but I'm going to tell you this, what if you are wrong, what if you are wrong, what if you are wrong and you falling under the category of touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm, what if you are wrong, where does that put you at? What standing does that put you in? See, I don't worry about you, and I don't go to other people's pages with a microscope trying to crawl up them and see what they're doing. I don't do that. If I see you doing something and I don't agree with it or I think it's wrong, my job is to pray for you. That's what a true man of the Most High going to do. My job ain't going to come over there and call you a stupid idiot or a dumbass nigga or a coward or something of that nature. But see, you tell on yourself, Brother Amron. That's why I'm praying for you right now. That's why we're going to have all of the people on my Facebook page that are looking at you. Because some of these people could come on there and start ripping you to shreds. But we don't give Satan no glory around here. We're going to call all of our people on Facebook that see this brother that we've been talking about. That we're going to lift him up in prayer. That the Father will even raise him up in his understanding and restore him to a good spirit. Or that the Father would break all of the teeth out of his mouth and expose him for the devil that he really is. That's what we're going to pray for. For. That's what we're going to pray for. We're going to pray for you, brother. We're going to pray for you. You see you see all of these people? Don't worry about that because we don't give no place to no to no to to to, to no bad comments. We are much bigger than that. And anybody that falls into that category, anybody that start assaulting this dude, anybody that start going back and forth, I'm going to block you for it. I'm going to take you off of my page because nobody drags us out of our character over here. We are learning how we are to do things per what the Most High said. We don't jump in our flesh over here. If you jump in your flesh on this page, you rest assured that tomorrow you will not be here. 
That's right. We're going to lift this brother up. We're going to lift that brother up, and we're going to pray for him. Because the father knows who he is. The father knows whether he's his child that's just misunderstood, or the father knows whether he's one that Satan knows. But you don't know, and I don't know. So we pray first, and then we let the father do what he's going to do. That's how we do that. And when we're talking about coming up under teachers, teachers, tutors, and governors until the appointed time of the Father, this is what we're talking about. You see, the Father don't have to wait till next week to send a test. He'll send a test immediately to see if you're going to walk by what the teacher is saying. Because in your flesh, a child wants to fight. But the teacher, the tutor, says, no. Stand down. And let the Father do what he's going to do. That's how we do that. No, no. You see? You see? I've been through these things before. And I've had brothers speak to me worse than that. But the Father found a way to humble them. And, and I don't want to say it like this, but the Father found a way to humble them. They'll come crawling back on their faces, begging for forgiveness when they really don't have to. Because they were forgiven the moment it happened. You see? I don't take this word personal, and I don't want nobody on this page taking this word personal neither, because that's what we're talking about today. And when I see that happening, it comes to let me know you still ain't listening, and you still ain't learning. So that means you're gonna have to take another lap. So, so that's what we're gonna do. Yeah, you know, my feelings be hurt a little bit sometimes because you know I really mean well, but that's part of it. Blessed are you when men shall revile you, persecute you, say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Great is your reward in heaven. You see? Every now and then you need somebody talking about you, calling you out your name. Every now and then you need that. Because those things hurt your heart. And they cause you to go to the Father in prayer. You know what I'm saying? So, it's all good. Yeah. You know? So, but it's all good. But I'm glad. See, I told y'all. See, I told y'all ain't going to be no smacking around, priest. I told you that. Yeah, I told you that. Yeah. Yeah, that's what you just, that's that's what you're going to get, uh, Amran, over here. You're going to get open rebuking, you know. See, we're going to rebuke you out of love. We're not going to fight with you. You're not worth nobody. You're not worth the fight, you know what I mean? I mean, you ain't worth the fight. And if you want to get technical, you know what I mean? I've seen your kind like this before. Growing up in the streets, I've seen that. Somebody tried to get some status built on somebody else's, you know, somebody else's credential. You know what I mean? The neighborhood sucker want to now go up against the neighborhood kingpin, you know. But the neighborhood sucker always end up getting destroyed. And it'll be the same way in this case. If you've proven to show yourself uh, of the wrong spirit, that's what's going to happen. Then you're going to be crushed and broken without remedy. Now, that's what the scriptures say. Because you're coming against one that's trying to do the work of the Most High uh, and, uh, and genuine about it. So, and besides that, every time I make a video, it's you wandering over here on my page. It's you coming on my page trying to wreak up some havoc. You trying to start a fight so you can draw a crowd? Is that what you're trying to do? I don't need to draw no crowd, boy, because I could destroy you in one minute. That's how I feel. But why I want my brothers and sisters to see me unmercifully beat the hell out of somebody when I'm trying to teach them how to love people? You, you know what I mean? That's why you got two. You got two people watching your video. You probably got a video going, and then you probably got two more phones set up to where you can invite yourself on there. But we're not coming on there, brother. We're going to pray for you. We're going to pray for you. And I want your Facebook world to do the same. Y'all pray for that, brother. Let us pray for each other. Let us stay built up. Most of all, y'all pray for my young king, Priest Mikael. You know, he just have an allergic reaction if anybody say anything about me. But that's a hump that you got to get over, son. You got to get over that hump. Because the father, if he can't use the circumstances in your life to drag you down, he will use me to do it. He will use somebody speaking against me to drag you all the way out of your character. You got to be wiser than that. So, till then, shalom, everybody.